Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Sunday, July 23rd. We have a lot to get through today. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I have a lot to talk about and show you. So I'm just going to get right into it. I hope you all had a good week, um, that things are going well. Things have been okay here, you know, life's challenges and things like that, but got through it, getting through it, glad it's the weekend. All right, so questions. So I had two questions this week on different videos. The first one was, how do you deal with static in diamonds? I have to be honest because I don't diamond paint anything but diamond art club now and i have for a really long time and i think i've only encountered static like once or twice but there are a couple of things that you can try i can't vouch for any of these methods but one the very first thing is you can spray static guard in the bag and i actually have a can of it you get it like in your laundry section of your grocery store you got to be careful though because it will like spray the diamonds out. So I would suggest like maybe spraying it on a cotton ball or spraying it on Q-tip. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this does work. So that's one way. The other way that people do is they will put the diamonds in the freezer. I've never tried that method. Or you can dip a Q-tip in rubbing alcohol and rub it inside the bag. People have sworn by that method also. Uh, Diamond Art Club, I feel like, has done a pretty good job in improving on that. Like, I don't encounter very much static anymore. Like I said, there's only been, I think, twice that I encountered static. And then the other question I had was on my blended thread tutorial. So if you have not seen, I have a playlist of cross-stitch tutorials that I did a couple of years ago that... The, the techniques apply still now. I mean, they're tried and true. And someone who watched that video said, could you use a variegated thread instead of trying, you know, a blended thread is two colors you use, you know, let's say you're doing a Mirabilia because the one project I remember doing a blended thread on was Celtic Noel by Lavender and Lace. It was 3371, which is like a dark chocolate brown. And then it was a dark red. I want to say it was like 815, 915, something, one of those. And there are a couple ways to do it. So normally you would do one strand of each of those and then just do your normal crosses. Um, variegated thread. Yes, you could do that. You could find a thread that has those two colors or something close to it and use that and you wouldn't have to worry about it. Or one way that I did it, you can, let's say you're using the 3371 and 915, you can pick which color you want to be dominant. And then you can do the bottom leg in the other color, the top leg in the other color. Do you know what I mean? Like you could do bottom leg in 3371 and the top leg in 915 if you wanted 915 to show more. And I think that's how I did that on that Celtic Noel piece which I don't have because when I stitched it, I had to sell it a couple months later, just broke. Okay. Needed the money. Um, didn't sell it for nearly what it was worth, but I enjoyed stitching it very much. So this same person said, you know, could you use variegated thread, but how do you blend with three strands? Same thing. So what I suggested to them was Take the dominant color that you want. If it is just two colors listed, like let's say again, it's 3371 and 915. If you want more of the red to show, do two strands of the 915, one strand of the 3371. Or you, again, you could do the bottom leg with 3371, the top leg with 915. There are a couple options and I did explain that to them. So I hope that that made sense how I just said it. Okay. 
Movies and TV. So my stepdaughter informed me that The Bachelorette was back on. I uh, had no idea. So we were two weeks behind by the time we started watching it. We caught up yesterday. Uh, the Bachelorette is Charity from last seasons of The Bachelor. Love her. I She's beautiful. Um, really nice person. It is just always so difficult finding love that way, I feel like. And of course, there's been drama with some of the men. I mean, it wouldn't be a show if it wasn't. But the biggest news for The Bachelor is the fact that they're finally going to have an older gentleman, and he's called The Golden Bachelor, and he is 71 years old. This is the first time ever in the history of the show, and the show's been on for 20 seasons, I think, something like that. He's going to be 71, and the guy's name is Jerry. He's actually really good looking. You know, for, uh, I, I, I don't even know how to word that. He's a good looking older gentleman, let me tell you. And so Jill and I were talking and she was like, I'm just curious what the women, like how old are the women going to be? She said, because if there's someone that's like 30 or 40 on there, I'm going to have a problem with it. Yeah, I get it because it's not realistic. Like, I feel like they almost need to limit it to within a 10 year difference. Like I would say between 65 and 75, like they need to, it needs to be older people. Like this was the whole purpose of the show. So can't wait to watch. And I think it's going to be on in the fall. Don't have an exact date yet, as far as I know. And I also watched yesterday, I stitched last night and I watched a movie on Netflix called The Tutor, The Tutor, like T-U-T-O-R. All I can say is this guy is a tutor and he gets this job tutoring this really wealthy kid at his house for a week. It all doesn't quite go as planned. That's all I'm going to say. I can't say anymore without giving it away. I enjoyed it. It, it was an entertaining movie. Um, and before I forget, my friend Sandra, her daughter, Aislinn, uh, her birthday is today and she's turning 20. So happy birthday, Aislinn. I hope you have a fantastic day. Turning 20 seems like a thousand years ago. <laughs> it was 29 years ago. That's a long time. But enjoy it. Enjoy your 20s for sure. Okay, books. I did finish The Neighbors by Daniel Hurst. Really enjoyed it. And I also finished a fantastic book by someone I have never read before. Sean Gilbert. Now, I had to look up how to pronounce this name because it's spelled S-I-A-N. It's pronounced Sean. So the book is called She Started It. And it's about a bachelorette party on this remote island that goes horribly wrong. And I posted on Instagram that it gave me Ruth Ware's in a Dark Dark Wood vibes. If you haven't read that book, Highly recommend. Um, this book was good. I finished it in two days. Couldn't stop reading it. Had to know what happened. And I, I started another book that I got from the library called, and it's a Reese's Book Club pick, Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Smell, is it? Where this woman is reliving the same day over and over telling you, I told you, I love books about like time travel and stuff. That's like now time travel. Um, everyone has suggested I watch Outlander and I can't get into it. And I know don't even come for me in the comments. Um, maybe I need to give it another shot, but I love movies like sliding doors with Gwyneth Paltrow, the time traveler's wife, um, the book I just read by Jillian Anderson, which was Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Fantastic. Um, this book is quite interesting because the character obviously is waking up and it's the day the same day. She's like, what is going on? So probably just like the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, he started to take advantage of it, of knowing what was going to happen 
and he started to use it to his advantage. And it was just such a fantastic movie. Um, if you haven't seen that, I think that's on Amazon prime. I saw it on there. I was going to watch it the other day. It's, it's on one of those that you can watch for free. Well, if you have prime. Okay. Gifts. All right. So I received a message from Holly. I mean, I'm trying to find Holly, who was the inventor of Patsy Putty. And I'm going to read you her note. She said, thank you for taking the time to try Patsy Putty. I really hope you enjoy it. It was so ironic and coincidental that while I was making it and watching my video, so she watches the channel, that I was thinking it smelled exactly like a Too Faced chocolate bar palette. Because remember I was talking about how some of those palettes smell like chocolate. And you were mentioning how much you like those. I knew I had to send you one. And so Holly has not opened her store yet, although she does have a link to it. She has it set like when a shop owner takes a break. But she has a Facebook group, so I'm going to link her Facebook group down below. And I'm going to also link the Etsy store. So the one she sent me is called Chocolate, and it actually looks like a chocolate bar on the inside. Like she put lines in it that makes it look like a chocolate bar. So here's what it looks like. And it smells divine. It smells just like chocolate. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent. When she messaged me, I was hesitant because if you have watched my channel for any length of time, I have tried a ton of putties. And the only one I really liked was Nix's Notions, which I still love. But this one is perfection too. Um, what really struck me with this one was the longevity of it, meaning, the way that I used it, I stuck my pen in and pulled. So I pulled a bunch off and then just took my fingers and got the excess off. So it was really in the pen. I want to say I diamond painted for at least 45 minutes the other day. and didn't have to put more putty in there one time. To me, that's the mark of a good putty. If I don't have to like keep putting it in there. I now I'm obsessed, right? And I can't wait until she opens her store, which she says should be by the end of this month. And I want to buy all the scents now. And what's awesome, if you check out her Facebook group, which like I said, I'll link down below, she makes the putty in the shape of what it is. Like she has a cookie one, looks like a cookie with sprinkles on top. She did one yesterday that looks like mistletoe. It's in the shape of mistletoe awesome stuff. And she has sent free samples to people to get them to try it. And everyone's liked it. Everyone just says it's divine. I love this so very much. So she has um, a post in the group that gives you some tips on using it. So please, if you uh, join the group, please read that post because you know, different things for different putties, right? Like I said, I'm really particular and I love it though. Absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Holly, for sending me that to try. It is now my new favorite putty. Yeah. Okay, purchases. Mm, here's where we have a bunch of show. <laughs> so this is, wasn't exactly purchases. These were both gifts. So I'm gonna uh, show this in the gift category. I had Bill yesterday help me make these into needle minders. So this was actually from Marianne from the retreat. She had had this on the end of a scissor fob and I loved it so much. I knew I wanted to make it into a needle minder. And on the top, it had one of those, um, like you could put it on a necklace. So I had Bill grind that off and then I just glued a magnet on the back. So I can now have it as a needle minder. And then Marianne also gave me and McKenna, and I don't know who else at the retreat. This was a pin. So I had Bill grind the back of the pin thing off, and then I put a magnet on. It says Bad Bitch Club. Like, are you kidding me? I knew I wanted that as a needle minder and not as um, a pin. So Marianne, again, thank you for all of the stuff that you gave me at the retreat last week. 
um, it's hard to believe that it's already been over a week since we've been there. Okay, purchases. Something, and I'll link it down below if I remember, I'm using a new tripod. So I have been, I've tried a bunch of tripods over the years since I've been doing the channel. I have been seeing this particular one on Instagram so much where it like, and it even has a light, which I've not tried yet because this, I have ample light in here, but it, it unfolds and it, and it goes up and it's really wonderful. The base is very, very heavy and weighted. So it doesn't tip over, but the whole thing folds down compact, which is really nice. So I got the pink one. Um, I bought mine on Amazon actually, and it was $50, but well worth it in my opinion. So I will make sure to link that down below for you guys. And then, so since it's been a month since I have been doing the videos once a week, and what I found myself doing was talking about the same topics, meaning questions, movies and TV, books, you know, things that come up consistently every single week. And I, I was writing on a steno pad, the outline, I would write it up at the top, the date, questions. The, the, and I said, you know what? It would be awesome to order a custom planner that already had the page laid out like that. So I did some research on Etsy. And I wound up ordering a planner from Holistic Planner. If you see that right there, I will link her Etsy store down below. And this is the planner. Now, she was very easy to work with, answered questions really quickly because you have to customize it. So I actually sent her a picture of my page with all of the topics on it and how I wanted it laid out. So this is what I wound up getting. It's spiral bound. Um, I also picked this, like the design of it. So Danielle's YouTube planner. And it also comes with like gold corner things to protect them from getting bent. And then on the inside, I have 50 pages in here. So this will last me a year because I only do one a week. But here is the inside. So you can see all these are all the topics I talk about every week. So during the week, I jot notes down here. So I know when I sit down here on Sunday, I know what I'm going to talk to you guys about. And then on the other side is just a lined page if I want to make more notes or have more things to talk about. It was well, well worth the money. And I absolutely love this. So thank you so very much. Samantha, that is the woman's name, Samantha. She was fantastic to work with. Okay. I also decided to purchase, you guys know when I stitch on perforated paper and there are isolated stitches, I like to do AB diamonds for them because it is hard on perforated paper to do isolated stitches because you can't carry threads, you'll be able to see it. So I decided to order some square AB diamonds to do this, which to me will resemble more of a stitch than a, than a round AB diamond. So I ordered some from DP with Sparklers. She has a ton on there. This is how they came packaged. So I ordered black, which I absolutely love these. So pretty and iridescent. I ordered black, I ordered green. I was thinking ahead to the Halloween piece that I'm going to do on perforated paper. And then I ordered just like some iridescent ones that I could use for snowflakes that are like, I know it's hard to tell, that's the backs, but they're like, um, yeah, it's like iridescent. These are called crystal ABs. So I ordered those three. And when I was looking, she had some needle minders and I need a needle minder. Like I need a hole in the head, but I really like this one. So I'm going to show you. It's a diamond. I really liked it. I mean, it keeps, I'm trying to get it to focus. There we go. Yeah, I really like that. So I got that. Okay. Now, Anne at the retreat, she had a fantastic junk journal 
and I asked her how she glued her fabric in there because she had a bunch of her stitched pieces and fabric and it looked really good. And I'm always looking for like a really good glue to use in the junk journal. So I ordered this. She ordered Beacon Fabric Fix. So this is what I got. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I'm sure a little goes a long way because you don't want this to like leak through the front of the fabric. Yeah, so ordered that. And then I got some of my orders in from patterns I had ordered. So I placed an order with Abby Top Knot Stitcher. And it was for the Just Cross Stitch Halloween Special Collection issue. So I'm going to show you my favorite ones because there was a whole bunch in here that I like this year, which I was very, very glad about. But I got that and then I fell in love with this pattern, which I feel like I could stitch on 18 count perforated paper and use gold petite treasure braid for the letters that are like gold. This is Crowns of Blue by Kathy Barrick. Don't you love that? So I was thinking of like these letters that are in the lighter color using gold petite treasure braid. Wouldn't that look so cool? And there are like two different colors of gold petite treasure braid. So I could be really out there and even do like these darker ones in the darker gold. I think it would look amazing. It would look so very cool. I just fell in love with this one so much. And on 18 count, this is only six and one eighth by nine. So I have paper that's big enough to do that. Yeah, loved that. Okay, so. Just Cross Stitch Halloween issue. Let's flip through that and I'm gonna show you my favorite ones. This one I laughed so hard. You should be afraid if I haven't had my coffee. <laughs> and it's like a hand, looks like coffee beans down there or coming out of the dirt. I loved it so much just because it's a coffee pattern, of course, but I love the purple fabric. I also was looking at that. And, you know, just like um, I'm a sucker for like coffee patterns, also Halloween patterns. Absolutely. Okay. On this page, I loved this cup. This cup is done in actually perforated plastic, but you could do it on paper. And I loved that the tea bag was coming out. Now, the only problem I have with this is when you look at the pattern, which I'm not going to show you, the back stitch for these words, I'm going to have to look at this picture to do it because you can hardly tell where the back stitch is. It didn't make sense. But I thought this would be a perfect junk journal piece. Absolutely. I love that so much. Then I love this and I was thinking there is a, uh, a distress oxide ink by Tim, um, by Ranger ink that I buy to color the paper called campfire. And I could use this to color the paper because look at this fabric, <gasps> look at that bright orange. Don't you love that? I am a sucker too for Quaker patterns. I don't think I've stitched one Quaker pattern ever in my life, maybe one. I love this so very much. It makes me want to just stitch it right now. Love it so much. Love, love, love. And that was stitched on 28 count tropical orange linen from Witchell. I, I can't do linen. I don't like it. Okay, this one caught my eye too. I love the little gnomes on it. Isn't that so cute? It's a lot of backstitch, but look at the pumpkins on the bottom and the spider web. I mean, there were just so many cool things happening in this one. And the gnomes are way too cute. Love that one so much. This one caught my eye also. I love the Halloween letters and the cat and all of it, the spider, the fence, yeah. 
love all of that. Okay, there are two ornaments on this page that I actually really liked. I love this one that says, Hello Pumpkin. I love the idea of trying a hoop finish. I'm telling you, I'm going to try that one of these days. Love that. And then I love this one, which is like a Celtic knot almost. Love, I love all those colors. And I love how they framed it. I really pay attention now to the framing, like how they do it, because I, it gives me inspiration on how I want to finish mine for sure. Okay, this one caught my eye also. Simple. I like the pumpkin. Love the words. Yeah. And, you know, you could tailor this. You could change the colors to make it maybe a brighter orange if you wanted to. Or make the pumpkin stem green instead of brown. I don't even know. That might be a green. What color is that? No, it's golden olive. And they actually used Sullivan's. Okay, here's another one. Like I said, I liked a lot of patterns in this year's. Love that. Are you kidding me right now? Love. So cool looking. That could be adapted for Sulky for sure. This one I love, love, love. I love them all. But this one too. Love, love, love. I love the letters. Now. I'll have to look at this because see there's, I'm looking at the patterns on the other side. There are fractional stitches in this. So I would not stitch this on paper. Obviously I would stitch it on fabric. I would stitch it on Lugana because you have to be, a, you can't do fractional stitches on perforated paper. Not even close, you know, here's another small one that I absolutely loved. Love, love, love. They made that into a card. Love that one. And then there's two more. Actually, three more. No, do I, did I like all four of those? I did. Okay. So I liked almost every single one on, on these pages, and I'm going to show you. Okay. This is the last set that I liked. I really like this one. Looks like books, of course, and thread. I like that one. I like this one. And I like the bottom two. I love that one and love that one. There were so many. This could keep me busy for an entire year. Easy stitching. So all of the stitching stores have this. One, two, three stitch has it. Like I said, I got mine from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Go get you your magazine. You can even go to Just Cross Stitch online and download it. You can get the PDF. So there you go. I also, because I love Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, but I forget that it's out there. I was on one, two, three stitch buying floss, uh, over dyed floss. And I noticed they had this summer issue. So I wound up buying the spring and the summer. And so I wanted to show you the ones I liked in those. So this is the spring issue. And when I got it in the mail, what caught my eye was this one. So I immediately flipped to it, right? And when I flipped to it, well, first, let me show you the other one on the cover that I loved, which Again, I am very intrigued on the finishing. I loved this one so much. I love the finishing of it. I can do bows. And I, here's what I'm trying to find, and I don't know if they make it. I am not great with cording. I mean, I've done it. It's tedious, in my opinion. I was trying to look for something on like scrapbook.com for a scrapbook embellishment that resembled something where you could edge it. I don't know if that even exists, but I loved this so much. It's such an amazing spring piece that I feel like I want to do like a backing board like this with this fabric or mat it with this scrapbook paper 
and put the bows at the top. Like, I absolutely love this so much. So very good. Okay, so when I flicked to this one, immediately I flipped to the pattern because I wanted to know what the fabric was, okay? And the fabric, there are so many new hand-dyed fabric companies out there. This one is called Lappin Loops. Never heard of them. So I go to the page. No judgment. But their fabric started at $35. I was like, mm, I am going to be coloring paper and stitching this one. This is called Friends Are Flowers. I love that so much. And that fabric was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. So that spurred me. I'm going to show you in a second. I also love this one. And this one is um, Anna's Easter Egg by Abby. Top Knot Stitcher. I loved it. I love it so much. There's Abby right there. Love that little design. Yeah. I just love, I was so, I'm so amazed at the people that I, personally have met that have made businesses of cross stitch, um, like Abby and Trisha and McKenna and, um, Stephanie from Lindy stitches. Um, I haven't met Stephanie in person, but I've talked to her online and I've watched her floss tube. These people, they've done such amazing things. I, I am just, I'm so proud of all of them for sure. Okay, and here's one from Stephanie from Lindy Stitches, which I love bee patterns now. Like, don't you love that? I have to get that. Whatever that thread is, what is that variegated thread? It is Classic Color Works Golden Star, I think. Let me see. Wait a minute. Where's the pattern? Because I love that thread. Um, yes, Classic Color Works Golden Star. It looks so cute. And the bee, you just want to squeeze it, not get stung, but you know what I mean. Are you kidding me? I love it. And isn't she like the cutest thing? You want to squeeze her, right? <laughs> but yeah, so, okay. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try to color paper. Now, when I did my clean out to get ready for this room, I sold all of the distress inks I had bought because I used a lot of them and it was just overwhelming having so many. I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy the ones I just need as I need them because you can get them in a couple of days from Ranger Ink and it's not a, not a problem. So that kind of pink. And then I found this pattern from one, two, three stitch. Okay, I'm gonna kind of go out of order here. I will show you the summer issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher in a second. There is a new designer called Yasmin's Made with Love. Never heard of this person. I bought their Peacock Quaker, and I wanna say it's called Bee Quaker, which I haven't received. Look at that fabric. Now, the fabric is from France. It is. Tom and Lily Creations Wisteria. And I tried to look for it and it just was proving difficult. I would love to stitch this on perforated paper anyway. So I found this color of, it is called Worn Lipstick. Now it's not showing up properly. It is much more pink than is showing on the screen. So I really want to use that to color it and see, see if I can get it to look like that. I mean, that does look pretty pink. So I may have to get, I may have to blend colors. There's another one called something flamingo that I almost got too, um, but I didn't get it, but we'll see. But don't you love that? Wait, do you see the B one when I get it? The, for the B one, the B one is on orange fabric. So I got this Distress Oxide, which is called Abandoned Coral. Yeah, they have so many wonderful colors for the Ranger ink. Okay, 
So the summer issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. Loved this one. I love alphabets also. Love. And I thought it would be neat. Okay, stitch this on perforated paper. Finish this on, I don't know, a canvas or something. Scrapbook paper in this checkered pattern. Get like some twine, tie a bow, and then find a little key. I could emulate that in scrapbook paper. There's no doubt about it. Love that. This one I also liked, another bee one. Obsessed with the bee patterns here lately. I love the purple flower in this one. Love. There is a couple more I liked a lot in this one. This is by um, Barbara Anna, which I love her pattern so much. This is called Summer Plant. I love the strawberries in this one. Look at that. And again, a hoop finish. So I love the bowl too. Very excited to try a hoop finish. I love this so much. That strawberry color is... It looks variegated. She, you just stitch it in different colors, I guess. I guess, I haven't really looked at it, but I love that one so much. Then this one too, again, another B one. <laughs> Is that not the cutest thing? Love. And then one more in there. Like I said, I am like set. I, I could not buy another pattern for like a couple years and I'd be good. This is called Long May You Stitch. And I loved the way the flag looks like it's actually waving in the breeze. Mm hmm Love when you can have movement in your piece to make it look like it's moving. Love that. Okay, two more purchases and then we can, well, a little bit more than two more. All right, so I was obsessed. I, I went through and followed everyone on Instagram that was at the retreat that had Instagram because Arlene had printed a whole list of us um, on there. So I saw... This is from Stitch the Stash Deborah. She stitched Darling and Whimsy Designs Quirky Quaker Pig. Now, they have a lot of Quaker designs out. They have like a moose, I want to say a penguin. There's a whole bunch. I am going to show you the original pattern because I don't have the pattern yet. And I thought I had. I'm going to have to search for it real quick. Because the original pattern, Deborah stitched hers with completely different floss, and I fell in love with it. Okay, here is the original. I'm pulling it up on Etsy right now. Okay, this is cute, but it didn't catch my eye. There's the... Why is it not going? Come on now. There we go. There's the original. Okay. Keep that in your head. When you see Deborah's, you're probably going to have the reaction that I did. And Deborah was also kind enough in her post to post the floss that she used. Okay. Here is Deborah's. Are you kidding me right now? Look how cute that pig is. I loved her conversion so much that I was on the hunt for the flosses. So the floss she used was these. Two of them were Evertote, um, Leo and Roxy. And one was a color and cotton special edition. I couldn't find the color and cotton. I did find the other two and then she used 310. So I did buy 
a color in cotton thread. Here are the two Leo and Roxy flosses. I got those the other day. And then I purchased a bunch of color and cotton and because I wanted two other ones for another project. Uh, one, two, three stitch sells color and cotton thread now. I actually found, thought this salmon one would work, but I think it's too close to the other one. So I'll use that for something else. But I think I'm going to use this one. This one is Aphrodite. And what I think I'm going to do is go in and pull the lighter pink out of it. Yeah, I think that's going to look really cute. So there was a freebie going around and I think I came upon it by mistake, actually. I don't even want to say by mistake just by looking for something else. And it's by the Primitive Hair and it's called Don't Piss Off the Fairies. This is a free pattern you can download from her site. I fell in love with it. I think I fell in love with it because of the fabric. Let's talk about the fabric. So this is only two colors, one color for the fairy, one color for the words. I, it's, and I think it's done in Weeks Dye Works. Weeks Dye Works and Gast, G-A-F, what is G-A-F? Gast is G-A-S-T. Anyway, I found from Color and Cotton, Kalamata, which I think would look really good for the fairy, and then Ivy for the green. So I have the colors of the floss. Fabric. I love primitive hair patterns, I'm just being honest, I don't care for their linen. This was stitched on 30 count wild rose linen. The fabric is beautiful. I love the roses, I love the words. So then I was on the hunt for fabric that looked sort of like this. So looking, looking, I spent a lot of time looking. I found fabric from Fabric Flare. So I want to show you it is called Flower Champagne, and it is described as mottled pink and cream hues patterned with friendly, gentle florals and vines. And I want to show you, why is it not coming up? Okay, here's the fabric. I ordered Ada. I'm pretty sure I did. Let me click on it. There's the fabric. Isn't that pretty? I think it looks good enough. Because remember, you need to stitch the fairy and the words like, and I know it keeps like moving. You need to stitch it like up here. You know what I mean? Um, so I will be very curious how that actually looks in person, but I'm very excited to stitch that. I think that will look amazing. And that would be something I would frame for sure. That would not be because fabric is, I find fabric too hard to finish on a board framing for me. Fabric works. All right. Last purchase. I told you I had a lot of purchases besides two diamond art club kits that I have, which we will do last. Primer's Cottage Stitches. Now, I will preface this by saying I normally do not like to buy mystery boxes for cross-stitch because I've been disappointed in the past. And they're usually quite a bit of money. Um, I got an email from Primer's Cottage Stitches that they were doing what's called Sip and Stitch, which is their mystery box. And they had one before and I didn't purchase it. So I decided to do this one. Now you didn't know what it was. So I bought it and I'm going to show you what was in it. So the sip part is a mug. I love the mug. Be happy. Primrose Cottages. Love, right? Yeah. Then you get a pattern and floss. The pattern that came with it. is not one that's been released yet. See, I think that's the that's the benefit too, is when you buy this, you get the pattern early. It is called Honey Bee Quaker and I'm in love. I love that so much. 
are you kidding me right now? Mm -hmm. Love, 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 love. And so they send you the floss. So you get the whole floss pack. And you get some stickers, some B stickers, which I will probably put on um, my thing, or I can put this in a junk journal. That would be junk journal material for sure. But they also send you the finishing kit. They send you, this is trim felt fabric. So I will save all of this because I will probably be doing something different. But if I stitch it on paper, I might use this to go around the outside. The, um, this dotted stuff, right? Trim. And that's what I was thinking too. I have trim like this that I bought from them in the past that I could probably use to go around the outside of stuff. But I was very pleased with that. So that was my last purchase purchase except for two diamond art club kits which i will show you in a second finishes or whips so i actually have two finishes mm -hmm. so i finally got my frame in from bressler frames on etsy for my primrose cottage stitches be happy i'm going to show it to you and then i'm going to explain the framing because the way i did this is completely different than i normally frame everything did that not turn out fantastic? Now, I realized that there's more down here than there is up here. Don't care. I love this frame so much, and they have a ton of colors. And what's nice is I ordered a custom size because they had sizes listed, but I wanted something a little smaller. So they said to message them. So I messaged them and I said, I don't even want glass. They were going to send it with glass. So I didn't even get glass. Now, normally how I frame something is I will use, they included the foam core. I will put down quilt batting. Then I will stretch the fabric around, tape it with stitchery tape. Well, when I did that, it looked so. It did not look good when I pressed it into the frame. And I think it's because some companies will do like a margin. They will leave some space in between the foam core and the side of the frame for like framing materials. This one was like almost flush. So when I was trying to put, you know, fabric, it was making it, it was too tight. It was too much. So I pulled it out and I said, all right, I'm going to have to frame it with no quilt batting. This is completely flat against the board. What I did was I just put stitchery tape on this and just slap this on. And actually, instead of, you know, normally you wrap fabric around the back. I didn't because that was the whole crux of the problem. I literally put the stitchery tape, slapped this on, and I trimmed around. So this is literally flat on here with nothing wrapped around the outside, nothing wrapped around the back. And then I was like, okay, I was going, normally I will finish also a frame. I'm gonna show you. Normally I would put scrapbook paper all around this to hide this. Well, <laughs> when I cleaned out my scrapbook paper and all of that, I got rid of all of it. I literally donated all of it except like the paper I use for backing perforated paper because I only buy the paper now as I need it. So I was like, well, hey, don't have any paper to back on here. What am I going to do? I have plenty of felt. So I put stitchery tape down on the back of the foam core, put a piece of felt. Here we go. I thought it turned out fantastic. I love how this turned out. And this frame is very lightweight. I love this company so much. I will definitely be ordering a frame from them again. And you know, I'm a sucker for like the ornate frames. I love all of the designs. This turned out beautiful. Now I get to hang it. Then last night, I finished my free pattern from Daily Cross Stitch website, 
My favorite drink is the next one. Now, before I show you, because this one turned out so cute as well. Remember I was stitching the wine glass. I was stitching this at the retreat. I had picked a gray sulky because I stitched this in sulky on 18 count perforated paper. I had picked a gray sulky and it was too light. I had bought Krynik at the retreat and hated it. I don't know. I thought maybe I would change my mind and like Krynik again. So my go-to for metallic thread is rainbow gallery petite treasure braid. So I had an idea of using silver petite treasure braid chef's kiss. So I finished it last night and then I fully finished it today. So I'm going to show you the backing board is from Etsy. I want to say it was either stitch, etc. Scarlet sky designs, one of those companies. Are you kidding me right now? So I, this is scrapbook paper. This is scrapbook paper that has wine glasses all over it. Then the piece and see how the wine glass sparkles. It's much more sparkly in person. This is not, this is not um, coming across well. And then these were just stickers that went along with the scrapbook paper. I love so much how this turned out. I thought it turned out so utterly amazing. So I've been killing it lately with the finishes. Yeah. Um, I only have one little small wing to do on my dragonfly, and then I'll have another finish. So I'll probably have that by next week. And then I'm going to be starting um, another coffee piece from Daily Cross Stitch. But let's just look at this again. I finished this this morning, fully finished it. I love it so much. Okay. So I went and perused Daily Cross Stitch. Um, website again and found some more coffee patterns that I did not know existed on there. So I wanted to show you because I printed them out. Because I got these from the Dollar Tree a while ago and I want to find patterns to stitch on here and finish it to cover the words, you know. So I need coffee patterns. So I saw this one. Love that one. Very simple.